In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called number of islands. So we're given a m times n 2D binary grid, so which represents a map of ones, which is the land, zeros, which is water, return the number of islands. So in this case, for each and every single cell, we can only have ones or zeros, right? So in this case, uh, we want to return the number of islands. An island is basically surrounded by water, so water is zero is formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally and vertically. So we cannot do diagonally, right? So you might assume that all four edges of the grid are surrounded by water, right? So you can see here, uh, if I go out of bound, it's basically water. So basically you can see here, I have a 2D array and for each and every single cell, um, they're connected by four edges, right? In this case, up, left, right, and the bottom, right? In this case, so we want to know the uh, the longest, or sorry, the, the the total number of islands that we have in this grid. And you can see that we have one because here you can see those islands are connected. Those ones are connected, right? So if those ones are connected, that's one island. And sorry, I missed one here. So you can see there's this is also connected to the uh, this island as well, right? So you see this is one island. So basically, this is going to be one island right here. And if I have something like this, where you can see we have three islands here. And the reason why we have three islands is because those four cells are connected. And you, like I said before, we cannot do diagonal. So this is just one single island. And this is one single island as well, right? Because you cannot do di you cannot connect a, uh, a cell diagonally, right? So you can see we, we can only have um three three islands in total okay so basically what we're just going to do is we're going to return the number of total islands that we have out of this entire grid right so you can see we have three so how can we solve this problem so to solve this problem uh what we need to do is we need to um basically traverse or do a dfs or bfs to search it's nearby, right? We want to know what's the largest, what's the size of the current island, right? If I want to, if I find a land, I want to know what are the cells that are connected to this cell, right? What are the cells that are connected to this island? Like how big is this island, right? What we're going to do is we actually can be able to use a 2D array, visit it, right? Mark the cells that are visited uh, as true, right? So if I visit this cell, I know this is a land, I will mark this true and then I will traverse or do a DFS for all four directions, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to do a DFS for all four directions or BFS for all four directions. And then basically we're going to mark each and every single land as true, right? Mark each and every single land as visited. And then what we're going to do is that for each and every of those cells, we're going to traverse to its nearby cells. You can see and mark them as visited. And if we have a situation where this cell, if we keep traversing, this is a water, right? If it's a water, we can just terminate this path of searching, right? Because this is a water, we do not want to, uh, we, we do not want to visit that, right? So we don't have to mark it as true. So basically we want to mark the land as true. And then what we're going to do is that once we mark those lands, you can see we visit those lands, we mark them as true. Then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do like a linear search, right, to search the nest land that's not visited, right? The nest land that's not visited, in this case, is none, because those lands are all connected. We visit them all using DFS, and now we find the nest land that's not visited, in this case, they're none, right? And now if I were to, if we were to look at this example right here, it's the same thing. So start right here, I visit, I mark the nearby lands that are connected to the cell to be visited, this is visited, this is visited, and this is also visited, right? So then I'm going to, because I can only go left, right, left, bottom, right, top, right? So in this case, I cannot go diagonal, so I cannot get to here, right? But I know that those nearby cells are water, right? Because they are zeros, so I'm not going to mark them visited, and I'm not going to, you know, uh, traverse that path, right? So then we're going to do like a linear search, in the 2D array to find a nest land that's not visited. In this case, this one. So I do a DFS for all four directions. In this case, they're all waters, right? So we basically cannot go a DFS. We cannot search down that path. 
So it's not going to work. So we're just going to pretty much, uh, you know, pretty much just mark this place as true. And then we're going to have a counter, of course, right? A counter that keep track of uh, like how many uh, islands that we have visited, right? So, so far we have one, two, so we have two, right? And then we also going to do a linear search, continue to do the search, right? Do the linear search. We find another land that's not visited. In this case, this one, we do a DFS, mark the nearby lands as visited, and we're going to update the counter. Now it's three, right? So we have three islands in total out of this entire grid, right? So le now let's take a look at how we can do this in code. So to do this in code, uh, as you can see, we're basically going to have a 2D array, right? 2D cache or 2D visit array. And basically, we're just going to mark each and every single cell. If we visit that cell, we're going to mark it. If we visit that cell and that cell is a island, we're going to mark it true, right? So you can see here, first, we're going to create this visited m times n, right? This m times n, you can see grid has a size of m times n. And then the counter in this case is zero. Initially, it's zero, right? So we have pretty much uh, not visited anything initially. So we're starting from the top of the grid, right? So we have a grid starting from the top. Right, and then we're working our way to the bottom, and we're trying to. Uh, if we visit this cell and this cell is a water, then what we can do is we can continue, or if we visit this cell before, then we can also continue as well. Right, and then if let's say if we have a situation where this cell right here is a one, then what we're going to do is we're going to call this DFS method and pass down our current coordinate. We're going to have our row, we're going to have our column, and then from that, what we're going to do is we're going to first check to see if it's out of bound, right? Because we can go out of bound, right? In this case, if it's out of bound, we can just return because we don't, we, we cannot search that place anymore, right? And if the current cell is not out of bound, what we can do is we can see if we visit the cell before. If we visit the cell before, then we don't have to continue to do this anymore, right? Uh, we're, the goal for this DFS is to mark all the islands that are visited, right? All the islands that are not visited to be visited right as long as the current cell is connected right as long as the cell is con connected to the uh, uh the nearby island right and this is the thing is that if this is the cell is water we can just return because we don't want to continue to search right and then if this is not a water and we did not visit this place before and this is not out of bound we can just mark this cell to be true then at the end what we're going to do is we're going to do a dfs for all four directions so it's going to be down, up, uh, right, and left, right? So for all four directions for the cell, right? So this, at the end, you can see, we're basically just going to return the counter, okay? And this will give us a time complexity of big O of M times N because we're only visiting those place once, right? Once we visit that place once, in this case, we're not going to visit that place again. Right, so this will give us a time complexity of m times n and a space complexity because we're using a visited uh, 2D array. We're going to uh, also have a space complexity of uh, big O of m times n as well. So there you have it, and thank you for watching.